Good morning. Good morning again. Um, we have another chapter from Genesis today, chapter 7. Um, it's about the flood. So today's entitled Fountains and Rain. Let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, you hold all of creation in your hands. It is your will alone that determines who lives and dies. The those who are sick and those who are healthy. You give us all that we have. In mercy, you continue to let us live. God, please forgive us for our trespasses. Lord, be with us and, and bless us through your word today. God, we seek to know and do your will. So we pray that you would open our eyes as we look at your scripture to help us know your will better in the large things and in the small. We pray these things in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's get started here. Chapter 7 of Genesis. Then the Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark you and all your household, for I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and his mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and his mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the heavens also, male and female, to keep their offspring alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. Noah was six hundred years old when the flood of waters came upon the earth. And Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him went into the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Of clean animals and of animals that are not clean, and of birds, and of everything that creeps on the ground, two and two, male and female, went into the ark with Noah, as God had commanded Noah. And after seven days, the waters of the flood came upon the earth. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, on that day, all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened, and rain fell upon the earth forty days and forty nights. On the, on the very same day, Noah and his sons, Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons with them entered the ark. They and every beast according to its kind, and all the livestock according to their kinds, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth according to its kind, and every bird according to its kind, every winged creature. They went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh, in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The flood continued forty days on the earth. The waters increased and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters prevailed and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed so mightily on the earth that all the high mountains under the whole heaven were covered. The waters prevailed above the mountains, covering them fifteen cubits deep. And all flesh died that moved on the earth, birds, livestock, beasts, all swarming creatures that swarm on the earth, and all mankind. Everything on the dry land in whose nostrils was the breath of life died. He blotted out every living thing that was on the face of the ground, man and animals and creeping things and birds of the heavens. They were blotted out from the earth. Only Noah was left and those who were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed on the earth 150 days. Destruction as complete as has ever been to this point on earth. What do we see in this passage? <clears throat> First, again, the Lord declares Noah righteous before him. 
It's clearly important. It keeps being said and brought up. And he declares him righteous. He gives him commands. Seven pairs of clean animals, one pair of unclean, seven pairs of birds. He's very specific in, in his instructions. Just as he was very specific in his, his instructions on how to build the ark, his, instruct, uh, his instructions for um, the animals and, and other things are very specific as well. Um, he, he states his purpose for saving the animals um, to keep their offspring alive on the face of the earth. He has a plan for redemption, to redeem living things. Noah was 600 years old when the waters came. Um, they went into the ark, but it was seven days before the waters came. And then we notice it's very specific about the day the flood started. It gives the exact day, 600th year of Noah's life in the second month, on the 17th day of the month. On that day is when the flood started. This, again, it is not something that you would see in legend. This is historical. Um, you see that the animals cooperated in entering the ark. That's miraculous. That had to have been God's hand. And we see that the water was very deep. The mountains under the whole heaven were covered. All flesh died. It says all flesh, everything that was on the ground died. Only Noah was left and those who were with him. Only Noah was left. So, what can we take away from this passage? Well, I notice in this passage three times it said that things were done as God commanded Noah. As God commanded him, things were done. So, that's important. Repeated three times that things were done as, as they were commanded Noah. You can see that salvation comes on God's terms. God's commandments are supreme. Now we don't know what would have happened if Noah hadn't done things as God commanded him, if things hadn't happened the way God commanded. Um, and I think we don't know that because, well, first of all, it's God's plan, and God's plan gets done the way he wants it to be done. But second, um, God chose Noah because Noah had a track record of obeying him. Okay, This wasn't some guy who, was, who didn't know God, who didn't know how to obey God, that had to start from scratch. Noah had a track record of obeying God. If you want to know God's big plan for your life, and I'd argue there's no bigger plan than, well, almost no bigger plan than saving everyone from a worldwide flood through your family surviving, um, then you have to start by obeying God in everyday things, everyday kind of boring things of life. If you don't obey in the tedium day to day, how can you expect to be able to obey God in the big things? Okay, because we see that, that at the end here, Noah was left alone. He's alone in the ark with his family. When, when this has presented him this incredibly difficult situation, he obeyed God through all the difficulty because he had already been obeying God through years, 600 years of his life he walked with God, and clearly he was very lonely in that time. We're told that he alone was righteous in his generation. That's years of solitary, a sol solitary life of following God, walking with God. He's used to being alone with the will of God. And so through those years of discipline and obedience to God, he has pre been prepared for this large plan of salvation where he had to do some very difficult things, not only in 
just the work it would take, but being alone in God's will and having to be consistent and faithful even though everything else is falling apart around him. Um, yeah, he had spent his life apart. He alone was righteous. Sometimes God's will is a lonely place to be. But he had been walking with God. His close companion was the Lord Almighty. He wasn't alone. He alone was left, is what it says. Only Noah was left and those were, who were with him on the ark. But he was not alone. God was with him, walking still. We also see that sin has consequences. You don't see them right away, but they are devastating. Man's sin, humanity's sin, did not only affect man. We see that man's sin affected all of creation. We saw that immediately after the fall. We see that here in the story of the flood, that man's sin, because man was put in charge of all creation to tend to it, man's sin affects all of creation. And I think that is true still. Our behavior, our sin, does affect us and all of creation. We are the stewards of this earth. <clears throat> and I'm not going to get too uh, in the weeds here because um, the Bible doesn't speak. I don't want to speak further than the Bible does here. But we do know that sin has consequences primarily in our lives. And that is, that is the, the first place we need to be concerned about is sin in our lives and our relationship with God. But we do see that sin does work its way out in creation as well. So, what can we conclude from this passage? There are myriad conclusions, but I think the most clear to me in my mind here is that we should not wait until disaster strikes to obey God. If, if Noah had waited until the flood started to say, Oh, God, what is your will for my life? Oh, please, Lord, meet me here in my in my need, that would have been a very difficult position, much more difficult than the one he found himself in. Because hearing and listening to God's commands is a discipline. It takes years of discipline. And it takes time to develop the skill of listening not and, and hearing as well. And obedience cannot be turned off and on and off and on as though it's a water tap. Turning a faucet on and off, that's not the way obedience works. It's, it builds with time and your ability to obey builds with time. And um, I'll say this as well as a, an encouragement, kind of a, an odd encouragement, but being in God's will is a lonely place to be sometimes. But you are not alone. Noah spent 600 years alone in his righteousness, walking with God. And his reward was being alone as humanity was destroyed, as all of creation was destroyed. But that reward came with a great blessing of being with God and in his will. So being in God's will is often a lonely place to be, but it is the only way you will survive this world and the next. That's all I have for today. Um, serve God, listen to him. Obey him. We do that together. Thankfully, we have community that we can um, join in and listen to and obey God. We are so thankful for that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, 
God Almighty, we see in your amazing Bible your plan of salvation for Noah and, and his family, your, your plan of salvation for all of humanity and all of creation, a foreshadowing of your Son and your plan of salvation for all of humanity, for all of eternity. God, we are so thankful to you. We need you more than we could ever know. God, let us not be caught up so much in your big plan for our lives that we forget to obey you day to day in the small things. Let us seek your direction, of course, in our lives for our ultimate direction. But God, let us just do something in your will every day moving forward so that when it comes time for us to make the hard decisions, we are already so used to hearing your voice that it is like an old friend that we walk with every day. We will know your voice and know your commands because we are so used to hearing it. God, please be with us today. Help us to live in your will today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Have a great day, everyone. God bless.